Welcome back to Repair University. Now in the last video we talked about kind of the basics and overviews of writing an estimate with front end impact. But this time, well Larry's going to walk me through writing an estimate on this Mercedes and I have a feeling I'm about to get schooled. <laughs> Thanks Larry for letting Thanks. me do this exercise with you. So I've got the VIN and I've got all of the information decoded already in my Autotech system. So I'm kind of ready to get started here. Let's go through this estimate. Okay, well the first thing I usually like to do and I try and teach people most of the time when a car comes into a shop, you're just worried about what I have to change, what has to be fixed. Because I work for a forensic engineer and we do accident reconstruction, and we live in New York City in Long Island area, there's some fraud investigations. Probably not as popular in Arkansas where you're from, but up in New York you might get some of that. It's probably the volume of the shops and, well, us New Yorkers, well, we know. <laughs> so I try and teach damage assessors or, or, or insurance personnel how to get damaged. Now, funny enough, the airbags didn't deploy on this vehicle. We lost the grill. Obviously, the car's hit in the front. Uh, it's a low-speed collision event, funny enough. And the reason why is I looked at this real quick. We went over it before we started the video. Was that it missed, basically, the bumper reinforcement and kind of went over the top. It overrode it a little bit. And you want to look at how the damage, how the, the applied impact forces were applied to the vehicle. So in this case, we have them at or near parallel to the vehicle, slightly offset more to the right side than the left side of the car. So knowing this type of damage, and obviously the hood had to be tied down, we have it here, we have impacts to the hood, the grill is obviously plastic and that came out, the hood's aluminum on this particular vehicle. So I like to start at the very front of the car. So we, we wanna stay in the family, take the bumper as a complete assembly, inclusive of let's say the fog lamps. Now different estimating systems will have different ways of breaking it up. Sometimes they're in with lights, sometimes on the bumper assembly you'll have lights that are on there that are part of the bumper assembly. And once again it's a matter of getting used to uh, which way you're going to write and which system you're writing on. But they all have their own little idiosyncrasies that you have to learn to be able to use them. But most people can get their way through it once you know what the buttons are. Right. So we, we, we obviously, the license plate's off on this. It's a New York State car so the plate probably came off, uh, they took, took it off before and uh, the license plate bracket's damaged, so we need that. Uh, another thing I like to do, especially on a lot of these uh, German cars or, or even some of the uh, GMs, you have to look for parking sensors, which sometimes aren't in the bumper fascia itself, it's down lower in the grill area, or in this case, Benz is using uh, radars a lot of times for parking sensors, which can be an issue. Now, with this particular Mercedes-Benz, the radar sensors in the front are usually right next to the uh, license plate bracket, which then they tell you you can only paint it one extra time before there's too much paint on there and the radar can't read it. In the back, they're off to the side, and that can be used for lane departure. It depends on what system it has, so it's always important to check with the manufacturer's website. In this case, it would be Star Tech Info with Wiz. Obviously, replacing the, the license plate bracket, I possibly may have some additional labor considerations for preparing the next bumper for Correct. that bracket, maybe additional drill time. But if I was thinking about repairing this bumper cover, I'd have to really think about the paint really hard, or I may render the system inoperable. Yes, depending on the type of system. Now, you can take this bumper on and off 50, 60 times, and you don't have to set the radar again for the Parktronics. Yet, if this was a Volkswagen Group vehicle, Porsche or Audi, once you take the bumper off and you put it back on again, it has to go back to the dealer and be reset by a uh, computer and there's a, a, an aiming device that they have to use to do the Parktronics. So that's also possibly a concern if I was looking at maybe a tear I was thinking about repairing. I wouldn't want to put a repair patch behind what might possibly go over a radar sensor. That's Correct. going to be more than just paint. Millage. Correct. You, you, you would actually block out that sensor and the sensor wouldn't work and then you'd find out that you're done with the repair and you can't clear the light inside the car. It'll give you a fault for parking or even lane departure if it's uh, equipped with it and especially Distronic Cruise Control which generally with the Benz is you're going to have a big camera right here behind the emblem. It won't be a see-through emblem, it'll be like a black emblem with the, um, a black area with a, a, like a glass and then there's the emblem on the outside and that actually sees through there electronically. Additionally on this vehicle we always have the tow cover. Um, even if you're reusing this tow cover or whatever the case is, you're repairing the bumper, uh, you'd have to put down paint time for that. Sometimes we have washer 
heads that are on here that'll pop out and those washer uh, uh, covers would also have to be taken care of and painted. An important thing on this bumper cover, even though it might be repairable uh, in some cases, we need to look deeper into it. We need to look where the, where the um, grill actually ripped out of a roll of tabs here. Also up here at the top where the bumper attaches, we can see that it's all twisted on this side so it rendered a bumper basically unrepairable even though the rest of it looks good. Mm -hmm. And this is where sometimes, so let's say the grill was still in here, you'd look at this and go, oh, this is a repairable bumper with some scratches, uh, maybe a little gouge, we can fix this. And then you, you get the bumper off and you find out I need a seven, eight hundred dollar bumper cover in some cases. Also the lights on Benz's, you'll have LED lights, you'll have uh, fog lamps in some cases, so it's important to really take a look at what options are on these vehicles. And, and lately the um, Estimating systems have gotten real good decoding these VINs properly so we know what's going on with them. The next area when we're done with the bumper fascia is to move into obviously the bumper absorber and we can see here this bumper absorber has some damage to it. Right. And the bumper reinforcement also has damage. But the, the reinforcement doesn't look like it really took a direct hit, it's more the fact that the uh, crossbar here was pushed rearward and actually dragged the bumper reinforcement rearward on it. But we look at this bumper reinforcement, we can see that there's this big hose line over here that's on top. So we mm -hmm. have to make a, you know, a notation that we do have a hose line in here and we're unsure what it's for unless we look deeper into it and see what this line is actually running across there for. Great, and I, and I'm getting some indications obviously from the system that there's a lot of aluminum in this car. Uh, the, yes, there's a lot of aluminum components at the front area. Basically the radiator core support forward is basically aluminum or plastic. There's very little steel forward. You have a lower crossbar here that's aluminum. The bumper reinforcement's aluminum. Obviously our air conditioner and condenser are aluminum. The hood's aluminum. The whole core support is. Headlights are plastic. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't figured a way how to make those out of aluminum yet. I'm going to pop the hood open real quick. Awesome. We're going to lift this up. And now that we have the hood open, uh, we can see that we got some plastic stuff here that's broken, but you can see that we have a very badly deformed core support upper tie bar. And uh, that other side, even though it's down a little bit and on an angle, the edge of it's okay. If we drop that and we come on this side, we can see that this took a kind of a, a downward movement to try and not send so much collision energy up over the top here. And funny enough, even though this is back probably a good seven, eight inches, we still made no contact with the engine. And we have a lot of distance here nowadays with these cars, how they're placing these engines in here. But still doesn't mean that something can't be wrong with the engine. We still need to check that also. And as we talked about before, you can see that we have the washer pump on that side. Right behind the washer pump, we have the ABS module, which is forward of the ABS uh, control unit. So if we actually had a, a more of a hit on that side, we could have damaged that actual module, which could be, you know, a couple of hundred bucks or even maybe close to a thousand dollars, not sure of the price of it, but that can be expensive. You can see we have big large air conditioning lines running down going over here. I talked about before about the cooler. Here we have a cooler up in the front and you can see this is curved backwards, so we have to change this cooler. We're not going to be bending this back into shape. No little repairs there, obviously. Uh, no, you probably <laughs> don't want to do that because you have to realize some of this aluminum uh, components can be heat treatable and non heat treatable type aluminum products and depending on the series if it's a if you go to bend aluminum back into shape well it's going to snap instantaneously unless you utilize heat to soften the aluminum to try and work it back into where it was but this also has a a, a coating on it. it's like a rubber it's it's not paint you can feel it's got like some sort of a coating on it so mm -hmm. it's probably there for a little bit of sound dampening in a way it's probably a coating if I scraped it it'll probably be thick um, material, so I can't heat it up. I'd probably set it on fire, and probably the fumes wouldn't be good for me to breathe in either. Mm. So now we know, obviously, I've got a lot of movement in that core support, so we've had a lot of movement. I've got some bent, so the reinforcement's bent from where it's pushed back on the hood latch. We're going to want to get this in and get it torn down for a little bit more deeper blueprinting. <coughs> well, like I said before in our other video, you bring the car in, we got a, a, a preliminary we can start with. You know, we know what, we can see a lot of this stuff is damaged. Now, I can anticipate that I would believe that this rail, at least this rail, should have moved inward a little bit. I don't think it really moved back, but I do believe this rail, because of the way this core support has been, I would anticipate some movement inward towards the center line. So I have to measure this car. That's a big thing. I would also check the rear suspension mounting points uh, to make sure none of the suspension in the back, because it's a four-link suspension. It has uh, aluminum components to it. They can move easily in a, a collision event, because if this car stopped at 30 miles an hour, the back of the car is still moving at 30. 
Newtonian laws. An object in motion keeps in motion until met with an outside force. Uh, so we have to remember that. The other thing is when the lights come out, the bumper cover comes off or the bumper fascia, uh, we take out the uh, Freon, we drain out the antifreeze, we pull all that stuff out, we'll see better a picture, see if anything else is damaged visually, and then electronically or, or mechanically, we're gonna have to measure this car to see you know, if we have any structural damage to it. I would anticipate at least some structural damage here. Because the car didn't get, uh, the bumper reinforcement didn't get hit, it kind of missed what the car was supposed to do, which is have the rails absorb some of that energy so it went above the rails. So I may not anticipate any lower rail damage, but upper rail damage could definitely be a problem. And that rail could have been pulled over or in a little bit because of the way this core support moved. So that's something else we want to take a look at, which means then uh, we have some repairs on that side. A lot of stuff on that area, components, mechanical components would have to be removed to be able to do this type of repair to this vehicle. And, um, and then you probably have to, when you're done with the car, obviously it's got to go back to the dealer for, um, it's going to have to have a wheel alignment. You know, uh, oh, excuse me, a wheel alignment check, I should say. Uh, probably going to need a wheel alignment, but it's going to need a wheel alignment check. You also have the issue with um, the passenger seat on most cars. Uh, would have to be re, uh, reinitialized or reweighed for occupant protection system, which is basically what shuts the airbag on and off on the passenger side of the car to determine between a small child, a small uh, adult woman, and a, a large male. Well, we've got a lot left to still look on this car. We're going to have to get it back there, get it on a rack, get it torn down, and start some of that measuring process. What we hope this exercise goes over is all the extra things that are involved in writing an estimate that don't involve just the damage you see. So we know in particular with this car, I've decoded it with the trim package, with the AutoVIN system, with Auto Explorer, it's told me everything that's probably hidden under this bumper cover, my radar cruise control, my parking sensors, and then we know about the airbag system. But even with or without a deployment, I got some airbag issues I gotta get on this estimate. I've got some resetting that I need to do on the passenger seat. And I've got some considerations on whether I would have repaired or replaced this bumper cover that had really nothing to do with the damage. So it's always important when you're writing an estimate that you go straight to your system and then go straight to the OEM to get all the information that you have available to you so you're writing the best Best estimate the first time, I'm going to get in the shop with Larry and I think my lessons are going to continue today. Stay tuned for more episodes of Repair University.